we started by looking at the Beatitudes, and we're still looking at the Beatitudes, the Beatitudes, the blessings, blessed are. Today, we are moving to verse 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. We have tried to look at mercy some weeks back or some months back. We looked at mercy when we were looking at the communicable attributes of God. And we did say mercy is one of those attributes of God that is communicable. But today we're looking at mercy as well because that when we looked at mercy, we looked at mercy most especially from the perspective of God, God's mercy unto us. And then we went into God's expectation of mercy from us. So hopefully we'll try to look at mercy this time. Much more now, we're looking at mercy from God's instruction to us through this beatitude, but there's still no way we'll look at mercy as God's instruction to us that we will not also look at God as the merciful God. Mercy. Mercy, the word mercy or the words translated mercy in scriptures are the words or the concept of mercy is one concept that is a little bit difficult to explain, a little bit difficult to understand. It encompasses a lot. Mercy is one of the strongest words in the Bible. In short, if you read through the Old Testament, one of the strongest words used for mercy is the word used for love in the Old Testament, the Hebrew word hesed. And so, when we're looking at mercy now from the New Testament, the picture that should come to our mind is that picture of love, which is like the Hebrew word, the English uh, version of it is agape. When we looked at the communicable uh, attributes of God, we looked at love and we looked at um, agape as well. Today, like I said earlier on, our focus is mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. What is mercy? What is that in mercy that makes it a blessed virtue? Is there anybody here who's experienced mercy before? Have you experienced mercy? Have you experienced mercy from God? Have you also experienced mercy from man? What is mercy? Now, the word mercy is also one word we use interchangeably with the word grace. But as we study through the scriptures, we realize that there is a difference between grace and mercy. Let's begin again. What is grace? Grace is undeserved favor. Good things that you do not deserve and you're given. That's grace. Now, when we look at mercy, we we'll see some of it there. Now, what is mercy? Mercy is what you deserve. The punishment, actually, the punishment you deserve, the disgrace that you deserve, being withheld from you, you have messed up big time. And the verdict, you know the verdict. The verdict is that you should be punished. But then, instead of being punished, it is removed from you. And in short, instead of being punished now, you are now being given grace, given what you do not deserve. That is mercy. And that is what Jesus Christ did for you and I. Oh, we sinned. 
we messed up. We failed. Not just that we failed, we were helpless. You know, we messed up and we could not <laughs> rescue ourselves from our mess. In short, the more we tried to rescue ourselves, the deeper we went in the mess. But you know what Jesus did? He came and took our mess. He came, took it upon himself. He took the punishment of what we deserve. And he was punished. And he went and died a disgraceful death. And what did he do? He now transferred unto us the inheritance right to become children of God, to become blessed of the Lord. Mercy. God's mercy is God's goodness. God's goodness to someone who is supposed to be in misery, supposed to be in distress, someone who is supposed to be punished, but now he is being helped. Someone not receiving the prize, the reward for his failure. Who needs mercy? Who needs mercy? <laughs> we all need mercy. If you have messed up, you need mercy. And good news is the Bible says, for all have sinned. We all have sinned. We've been separated by our sins from God and we deserve punishment from God. But God gave us mercy. The concept of mercy is very close to the concept of forgiveness. Because for you to let go and not punish somebody who has messed up, it means you have forgiven the person. You have just released the person from the punishment that the person deserved. Mercy. While studying this word mercy, what, one of the strongest pictures that was painted in my heart of mercy was painted by William Barclay, that great New Testament scholar. He used the word sympathy to explain mercy. And when he used the word sympathy, he used the word Sympathy meaning entering under somebody else's skin and experiencing life from the perspective of that person. I know you say it's empathy. No, it is sympathy. I was one that read it. You didn't. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That is what I read. Maybe my mind is failing me, but for now, that is what I read. So, as at this point in time, I'm the one speaking. So, anything I say is right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, entering under one skin, what does that mean? You do not truly understand a man until you have experienced what that man has experienced in real time. You know, for you and I, if we experience what Jacob experienced, no, no, no not Jacob, what Job, I think Job is better. If we experience what Job experienced, with the knowledge we have, there is the tendency that we may be a little bit more, more patient with God, more understanding with our friends. I don't know if you understand. But if, we, if you experience what Job experienced in real time, your perspective of Job will change. A good number of us, when we read about Old, Old Testament or Bible um, stories, about people that failed in the Bible, even people like Judas, it is very easy for you and I to pass judgment. 
And the same thing we do to ourselves. Very easy to pass judgment on people when you've not gone through or you're not going through what they're going through. You walk past somebody and you greet the person, good afternoon, sir. And the person does not answer you. You come again, good afternoon, sir. And the person asks you, what is good about the afternoon? <laughs> and you look at the person and ask the person, is it because I brought myself to your level to greet you? <laughs> so mercy is trying to understand what that person is going through. Hmm. So when the Bible says, blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy, the kind of treatment you are meeting on somebody, the way you are dealing with somebody, are you dealing with the person the same way you want to be dealt with? If you're not dealing with somebody the same way you want others to deal with you, then you don't understand mercy. So when he says, blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Most of us, <laughs> if, if not all of us, most of us are hypocrites. Hypocrites. We'll be glad to deal with people in certain ways, but you dare not deal with me that way. <laughs> if you deal with me that way, you will know that they are Christians and they are Christians. But if I deal with you, I want you to accept it. For me, the most intriguing set of people to, to study, I like studying people, are those people that claim that uh, they will tell, say the truth no matter who the person is. We say it just like it is. The problem is when you confront them and tell them just like it is, you will know that <laughs> khaki and leather, they only look alike. They are not the same. Jesus said, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. The question I would like to ask you this evening is are you in line for mercy? Are you in line for mercy? If not, I pray this evening that God will help you in such a way that you will be in line for mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. How merciful are you? How forgiving are you? As we look at this concept of mercy, I would like to look at it from certain perspectives or certain experiences in the Bible. How many of us remember that story? The story of the Good Samaritan. The story of the Good Samaritan as recorded in the Gospel of Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10, beginning from verse 25, Jesus Christ told the parable of the Good Samaritan. And as he's rounding up the parable in verse 36, Luke 10, 36, the Lord will ask, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? And what was the response they gave? The expert of the Lord replied, the one who had mercy on him. The one who had mercy on him. 
if you remember very well, the person that needed mercy was a Jew. The people that refused to help him were Jews. Not just Jews. They were religious Jews. Of course, refusing to help him added to his pain. <laughs> I repeat again. Refusing to help him added to his pain. It is better you didn't even see him or he didn't see you in his pain. But you know, upon seeing you and having the hope that you can help him and you walk away and no help, it is emotional robbery. So when we are not merciful, we are making life more difficult for people. I didn't make sense. When you withhold mercy from people, you are adding to their pains. You are not leaving the pain at the level at which you met it. Is it making sense to anybody? You are aggravating the pain of the person who needs mercy. We, 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 I think I've shared this before. We had a brother well, years ago when we were in Lagos who married a sister and the name of the sister is Mercy. And we used to joke, um, how was brother so, so, so before he married Mercy, and the response is he was merciless. <laughs> May God have mercy on our mercilessness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The person who was dying, there was somebody who went there and helped him. Jesus said, blessed are the merciful. For they will obtain mercy. The person that went to help him was a person that was receiving wickedness. You remember in Acts of the Apostles chapter 10, when Peter got to the house of Cornelius, he said, you Gentiles, you know that we Jews, we do not associate with Gentiles. So the person that was merciful, the good Samaritan, the merciful Samaritan was one who was receiving wickedness from his neighbors, but yet now gave good. Amen. Another picture of mercy I see is in the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew 18. You know this story very well. Um, Matthew 18. The story started in verse 21. Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times. I tell you not seven times, Peter, but 77 times. And Jesus now went ahead and gave a parable. A parable of a servant that was merciless. The parable of a servant who had experienced great mercy, but was heartless. Who was owed so much, or who owed so much, and was owed so little. He was forgiven the so much, and yet for this, this little that he was owed, he was determined to destroy that man's life, that man's career, that man's reputation. Amen. <laughs> you know, sometimes in the name of being upright, some of us are simply 
demonically wicked. Father, have mercy on us. <laughs> oh, the master said to him, verse 32, you, you wicked servant, I counseled all the other debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he paid back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each one of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. God have mercy on me. That gives me the picture of mercy. The picture of mercy is the picture of forgiveness. Somebody deserves your punishment and you let go of that person. Amen. Sometimes it is sweet to have power. <laughs> Sometimes it is sweet to have authority over people. But lots of times when we do, we forget to be humans. When we do, we forget that we too, we are at the mercy of God. Amen. Why should we show mercy? We should show mercy because God has been merciful to us. Um, Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 says, because of the Lord's great love, that word love there is the word has said, mercy. Because of the Lord's great mercy, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. Verse 23, they are new every morning. Oh, God gives us mercy to drink every morning, daily. Every one of us you see, we have a daily dose of mercy. So uh, Jesus will tell Peter, not seven times. Again and again and again. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4. Ephesians 2 4. It says that because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Hallelujah. Why should we give mercy? We should give mercy because most likely, we too have received mercy in life. I beg to share with you, it is not every bad thing you have done that people have punished you for. Some people just showed you mercy. <laughs> you know sometimes somebody does something and you want to beat the person and you don't find any way to beat anybody. <laughs> just go. I think somebody must have shown you mercy before. In life, you walk through life to this point. I agree with you, you've experienced wickedness, but somebody has shown you mercy. Funny enough, some of the people who have shown you mercy, you didn't even know about it. You did things that people ought to have killed you. Eh, just live on, live on, just live on. Why do we need to show mercy? We need to show mercy because God commands us to be merciful. Amen. How does he put it in Micah chapter 6 verse 8? Micah 6 8. He says he has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with God. 
Why do you need to show mercy? You need to show mercy because most likely, someday, sooner than you think, you too may need mercy. Either from God or from a fellow man. You didn't get that? We are all candidates lined up for mercy. I pray when I need mercy, I will get it. So why do I need to need, give mercy? Because I might need it very soon. And that's why Jesus said, blessed are the merciful. Why? They will receive mercy. James chapter 2 verse 13 says, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Hey, I pray. When you are lined up for judgment, God will change it for you and give mercy. But please, you better give mercy. You better show mercy before it is your turn. The New Century Version says, you must show mercy to others or God won't show mercy to you. He said, but the person who shows mercy can stand without fear at the judgment. Why do you need to show mercy? You need to show mercy because mercy will determine, the way you show mercy will determine how you will be judged. Just like we're told in the story of the unjust servant. Why do you need to show mercy? You need to show mercy because mercy, being merciful will make you a happier person. <laughs> Amen. You will be happier. You will be better. The Bible says, he who despises his neighbor's sins. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 21. Proverbs 14, 21. It is a sin to despise one's neighbor. But blessed is the one who is kind to the needy. Who is merciful to the needy. Be merciful. is good for you. It's beneficial. A man who is kind benefits himself. But a cruel man hurts himself. Proverbs 11 verse 17. Proverbs 11 verse 17. It says, those who are kind do what? They benefit themselves. But cruel bring ruin to themselves. In the King James, it says, the merciful man doeth good to his own soul. But he that is cruel troubleth what? His own flesh. <laughs> Turn to somebody and tell the person, please, I beg you, don't trouble your flesh. Don't trouble your life. <laughs> Be a merciful person. Show mercy like your heavenly father. Why should we show mercy? We should show mercy if we have the gene of God in us. If you are a child of God, you will behave like your father. Little wonder Jesus says, by this shall men know you are my disciples. If you have love one for another, if you're merciful towards one another, blessed are the merciful. For what will happen to them? They will obtain mercy. We read that passage uh, in the morning. I think, I'm not sure we read it during the first service. I just quoted from it, but during the second service, we read it. So let's read it again. The gospel according to St. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6 from verse 37. Luke 6, 37. Are we there? It says, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn 
and you will not be condemned. Now, please, I think, no, it will not, it, no, we will not, um, I will not do you favor if we begin it from that verse 37. Let's go back. Let's go back to verse 36. Luke chapter 6 from verse 36. Let's read verse 36 together. It says, what does this say? Be merciful just as your father is merciful. So we understand now verse 38. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give. Give mercy and it will be given to you. Give condemnation and it will be given to you. Give judgment and it will be given to you. How will it be given? The same way you give? No. How will it be given? A good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, will be poured into your lap. Our mothers will understand this very well. You understand a good measure. If you go and buy Gary, eh, they have after they scoop the gari, <coughs> press it. <laughs> hey, God, grant that I will receive a good measure of mercy. At their times, I have been merciless. Have mercy on me. Grant that my life will be a life of mercy. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, grant that my life will beautify the life of others. My life will beautify the community you've placed me. Oh, help me, O oh King Eternal. Not to be a wicked person, but to be kind, to be merciful, to be loving. Help me to be a source of joy to somebody, most especially to the weak, to the helpless. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Do you know God will bring helpless people around us? <laughs> helpless people around us. People that will need our mercy. The good news is that at some point in time, you'll be, you'll be helpless yourself. It's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. All of us. Blessed are the merciful, for they will obtain mercy. God bless you.